Alrighty, we continue with OSPF. In our previous lecture, we went ahead and did just basic OSPF when we looked at the interfaces and the short, you know, looked at the database and things like that. And in this particular lecture, it's going to be very important, especially for your CCNA certification, because you need to see how the election process works. All right. And since we are on a multi-access network or broadcast network, uh, when you do configure OSPF, it will create that election. I'm going to see how it is going to elect the designated router or the backup designated router. Now, you do see here, you see some loopbacks. You have loopback 1, loopback 2, loopback 3, and loopback 4. And we will be configuring in that particular order. 1, 2, 3, 4. You know me, there's a method to the madness. All right. So that will be loopback addresses to pretend that we have networks hanging off these routers right here. And the physical network address uh, for the LAN interfaces. So this will be 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, and 1.4. So let's go ahead and we're going to first, first, the first trip around the world is going to be just putting the physical addresses. All right. And then the second trip around the world will actually configure OSPF. And then the third trip around the world will configure the loopbacks. And we'll see its behavior. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's start here with router one. Pretty simple. No big deal here. You're just going to get a host name, obviously, so we know which router we're in. Host name R1. I'm going to interface F0 slash 0 IP address 192.168. And of course, with my memory, okay, it's one. I always forget if it's 100 or one. I don't remember. One. Uh, one dot one. Yes, I'm going against what I said. But again, but this is just uh, lab here for OSPF broadcast and all that good stuff. All right, anyway. Not important. 255, 255, 255, not zero. And we just do a no shot. We really don't care about anything else. Do WR. That is router one. Let's go to router two. <clears throat> We're going to say no to that. Let's go to name the router. We're we'll going to global config. Host name R2. Interface F0 slash zero. IP address 192.168.1.2. Sorry about that. 1.2. Because we are in the same network. 255.255.255.0. We're all connected to the same switch. No shut. All right. DWR. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and go to router three. Same old, same old. Say no. Here's the name. Config T. Most name. Router Tress. Okay, interface F0 slash 0, IP address 192.168.1.3, 255, 255, 255.0. No shut. New WR. Obviously, if you were to configure OSPF, then we'll not give you a scenario like this. This is for you to understand when I ask you the multiple choice questions. And you would always go back, remember, ladies and gentlemen, you always go back to privilege mode, okay? There, you cannot do the do command in the CCNA. Uh, host name, uh, R4. Interface, F0, slash 0. IP address, 192.168.1.4. 255, Oops. You see a number there. 5, 255, 0. No shot. Cool. All right. No problem. We should have green lights. This is after span tree, which we'll be talking later on in the course. All right. Finishes doing its little thing there. All right. Saying, hey, what is this port? What am I going to do with it? I mean, take about 80 years to turn into an affording state. All right. Let's just wait it for a little bit. But meanwhile, you see that you're going to be connected. All right. Let's do a control Z here. Let me just look at the routing table, show IP route. You should be connected to the one dot network. So you should be able to ping 192.168.1.2. Okay. 1.3. Remember ARP, 
That's why it does that. And hopefully Forest Pantry finish playing around. Okay. And here we go. So we have connectivity. All right. But again, we uh, we need to configure OSPF. Okay. So we're going to start from router 1, then router 2, then router 3. Router four. Remember, we haven't done the loopbacks yet. The only thing we've done is the physical addresses. Keep that in mind. So let's configure OSPF. Uh, config T. Router OSPF 1. Network 192.168.1.0.0.0.255. And I just use area 0 just for giggles. I mean, that's what they normally use in the test anyway. This is the only network we have right now, so this is the only one that we need to advertise. All right, pretty much done right there. And it's going to be the same command all the way around. Again, around a one, two, three, four. Let's come up here. Let's exit. Router. Oops. Router OSPF1. Network 192.1. No, no, no. 168.1.0.0.0.255. Dot 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 zero, 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 dot Area 0. In reality, if you are building a real network, you will always start with area zero, right? Because area zero is your backbone area. We all must connect back to area zero. Uh, router OSPF one network one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot zero. Um, walk our mass zero 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 two five five area zero. You know are. Where am I? Oh, look, floating that. Isn't that interesting? All right, and then finally, the last router. Router OSPF 1 network 192.168.1.0.0.0.255. Dot dot zero, zero dot zero dot zero dot area 0. Do WR. All right, Control Z. Uh, everything is there. Let's do a show IP route. And let's see what we see. Oh, look, we're connected to one network. <laughs> Obviously, there's no other network that we're going to see there. If we were to do a show IP OSPF database, you see it created links, though, okay, to one, two, three, and four. So those are the router IDs for each router, the highest IP address. Okay. Uh, this is one type of LSA right here. There's another type of LSA at this point, but no, no I'm going to be uh, make a big deal about it for the CCNA. All right. What we're interested in is who, pray tell, is going to be the designated router and the backup designated router. How do we look at that information? Show IP interface. OSP, um, yeah, show IP interface, OSPF, uh, show IP, no, show IP OSPF, sorry, show IP OSPF interface, F0 slash 0, enter. So here you see the same thing we saw in the previous lecture. Here's my router ID, I'm network 4, it's a broadcast, I have a part of 1, which tells me I'm doing an actual election, and my designated router is router 1.1. And my backup designated router is 1.2. Well, that doesn't make any sense. According to documentation, it should be the router with the highest router ID, which should be 1.4. And the backup should be 1.3. But why does this happen? Because this router came up first, and this is why I did it. I did OSPF first on this, and then I did it on this. So there's two things you can do. You can clear the IP OSPF process, which is the same thing as reloading the router anyway. So I'm going to take a shortcut, okay? And I'm going to kick OSPF in the butt, okay, by rebooting the switch. Do not do this in your production environment. Please do it in the maintenance window, and you will clear the process. Please don't do this because then routers that you may, you may not want to... Uh, <laughs> Shut down and reboot will happen. Okay, so I'm going to just reload here. So we'll wait now for the reloading slab. So we can do whatever we want, pretty much. But in a networking environment, obviously, you're not going to, you never, 
do this. If you are going to shut down equipment, definitely you wait to the maintenance window. You better get permissions from everybody, all right, before you do this, okay? Uh, or even the clear IP or SPF process, which is actually the command that you would do. But I just want it because if you reboot it, it will go ahead and redo the election since they're on the physical interface. And if they're not in the loopbacks, so it'll do it. All right. So once Pantry finishes doing its job, and it takes a little bit more for OSPF to run its election, okay, then let's see what may happen with the designated router. It should work uh, properly. If it does work properly, router 4, this guy right here, he should be, right, this guy right here should be the designated router, and this guy here should be your backup designated router. All right, so let's take a look. So let's do a show IP OSPF interface F0 slash 0. We hit enter. And by kicking it, it said, okay, okay, I'm sorry. And it gave me, hey, this, I am the designated router. And you are, and router 3 is the backup designated router. What's that so important? Well, check this out. Show IP OSPF neighbors. Nay for short. You see this? The states, the designated router and the backup designated router will have full relationships with each other. Okay? Full relationships. All right? Here we have designator. Well, the, the back of this inner router and this inner router have full relations with everybody, I should say. Sorry about that. All right. But you see here it says draw there, which means designated router, designated router other. Jesus. Okay. Which is router two. And this designated router other, which is router one. Okay. But being the DR, we have a full relationship. We're exchanging complete database information. Importante, very important to know. Let's go to the backup designated router and let's look at its database. Okay, let's do a control Z. Control Z. Show IP OSPF database. Okay, and not database. Show IP OSPF uh, neighbor. That's what I want. You can see here that we have full relationships with everybody. Okay, the DR, which is router 4. And the other two routers, right? But now let's take a look at router two. See what that looks like. Control Z. Show IP OSPF neighbor. Oh, look at that. To the backup designated router, it has a full relationship. To the designated router, it has a full relationship, BDR, DR. But to the other, right, designated router, other, meaning it's not one or the other. It stopped the relationship process in the two-way state. So it's not going to exchange database information. All right. So it stopped right there because everybody talks to the designated router. All right. And the backup designated router, but not to the other ones. All right. So again, the CCNA course, ladies and gentlemen, it's there for you. Take advantage of it. Okay. So we got the right uh, designated router DR. And BDR, remember, one DR per multi-access network and one BDR per multi-access network. Now, why in the world do I have a loopback address on here? Because loopback addresses, okay, will override who the designated router is. So again, I'm going to go in the same order, and I'm going to put a loopback address on each one of these. So if it has loopbacks, instead of looking at the actual IP address on a physical interface, it will look at the loopback. So let's see. You know, this 9 out of 10 times it works on the packet tracer. All right, so let's go ahead and create int L01 enter. And you don't need to turn these on. These are already on. IP address. And we're using a host address. 101.101.1.255.255.255.255. Do WR. Go to the other router. Well, since we're here, let's just advertise their OSPF already. Uh, let me exit out of here. Router OSPF one. This is why I always use just one network. Now we got to advertise it in there, right? And the network is one 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 one. So we put network one 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 and wildcard mask zero 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 zero. 
right? Area zero. One too many decimals. No. Oh, okay. And let's do WR. So we went ahead and put that loopback address or interface that we just entered into OSPF. So let's go ahead and do the second router. Config T. Interface LO2. IP address. 2.2.2.2. 255, 255, 255, 255. And then uh, we're going to put it in OSPF, router, OSPF, 1, network, 2.2.2.2, 2 .2 .2 .2, 0, 0, 0, not enough decimals this time, area 0. All right, let's copy that. Let's go to router 3. Okay, let's do the same thing, config T. Um, uh, interface L03, IP address 3.3.3.3, 255, 255, 255, 255. Let's put it inside the OSPF process, router OSPF1. Net, let's read a little bit here. Net, short for network. Three 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 zero 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 zero. Remember how we get the wall car mask? Area zero. Okay, new WR. And then last router. Config T. Uh int woo. Int L O L O four. IP address four dot four dot four dot four. 255.255.255.255 and let's put it inside OSPF router <clears throat> OSPF 1 network 4.4.4.4.0.0.0.0 area 0 all right do the WR control Z now they do it automatically show IP OSPF OSPF interface F0 slash 0. No, still 4 and 3. Show IP route. I'm seeing loopbacks. Uh, 1111, 2222, 3 So that means I should be able to ping 1.1.1.1.1. Uh, right? Ping 2.2.2.2. Okay, and then 3.3.3.3. So I do have full reachability across the networks. Uh, OSPF is already learning about all the routes. But you can see that, let me just do the up arrow, that it's not going to change it. We need to, again, kickstart the election process either by doing the clear IP OSPF process. That is a command. Right? It's going to ask you, you want to go ahead and do it? Reset all OSPF process? You can say yes. All you have to do it in lowercase. Case sensitive, and you say yes, it will detach from all of them, and you do it to the backup designated router as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, control Z over here. Clear, oh, let's clear his process too. Clear IP OSPF process. All right, and you say yes. All right, so. Let's wait till OSPF now finishes doing its thing. Well, we got the green lights, but we got to wait for OSPF to finish creating those neighbor relationships again. So we can just sit here. You see full loading done, full loading done. It's got the four. So now things are changing a little bit, all right, as far as neighbors are concerned. Show IP route. Right now I know about the one, the two, the three. Oh, I'm connected to the three. I'm sorry. The one, the two, the four, which is good. Okay, let's see what router one knows. Okay, see if it knows. Let's check the other side. Show IP route. So it knows about the uh, the two, the three, and the four. You can see it right here. All right, it knows about that one. It knows about that one. It knows about that one. All right, because we're connected directly to that one. So that's cool. Let's see. We have we can ping. We should be able to four dot four dot four dot four. Okay. And then always verify, always verify, especially when it comes to Cisco. 
All right. You want to make sure that things are working the way you want them to work or what they told you it had to work. Sometimes what they tell you it had to work, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's correct. Let's look at it now. Show IP OSPF interface F0 slash 0. And now, again, here we go. Now, you see, the designated router is 4444, but it's still using the backup designated router as 1.2. If we were to reboot again, let's say like the switch, have the election run again, it would choose the loopback, okay? But this is one of the ways you can control the election. This is the way you should do it. Uh, well, really, you, if you hard code a router ID, it will choose that over anything else. But also priority numbers. So what I'm going to do is, we've seen that it chose, we had, it chose the physical address first. That's the only thing we had, the highest physical address. And then if we do the, and the loopbacks, it will choose the loopback. Again, if I re were to clear the process again or reboot the switch, it will pick the correct one. And but what we're gonna do is I'm gonna make actually um, router two become the DR and router one become the BDR. And the way we're gonna do this, the way we're gonna accomplish this goal is by using the priority numbers on the interface. So let's go to router two. All right, let's exit out of here. We're going to interface F0 slash 0. And you say IP OSPF priority. All right, let's question mark this out. And you can see from 0 to 55. 0 means no election. 55, you're the man. So we're going to make this guy, you're the man. All right, as an exaggeration, obviously, he will always be the designated router. I could have just put 2, and that would have been good to go. All right, so IP OSPF priority 255. All right, do WR. All right, and then here, I'm going to go into the interface. Interface, oh, let's go to global first. Config T, interface F0 slash 0, and then IP OSPF priority. This is my backup, I'll say 254. All right, do WR. I like to go to extremes. All right, let's see if it took effect. Show IP. I like, to, I like things to take effect like right away, but obviously. It doesn't happen that way. Show IP OSPF uh, interface F0 slash 0. And it's still showing me this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reboot the switch. Again, please, disclaimer, do not do this in your production networks. All right. Enable reload. All right. And let it go through its process again. One of the things that you need to keep in mind here, because uh, this will be probably more likely a multiple choice questions. Always remember, you have one designated router per multi-axis network. So if you have two of these stars, all right, through, you know, each broadcast, right, each Ethernet segment will have their own uh, DR and BDR. And the DR will be, uh, if no loopbacks, if no loopbacks exist, it will use the highest IP address on any physical interface. If loopbacks exist, it will choose the highest loopback interface, all right, to be the router, uh, to be the DR, or now obviously the second highest to be the BDR. Okay. Uh, but again, uh, depending on the information they give you, priority number trumps all that. And if you hard code the router ID, which is something that Cisco recommends, that will trump that as well. So let's take a look now. Let's go to router two. Hopefully it's done doing what it's doing. I think it has. Let's take a look at the routing table and see who we know about. Show IP OSPF. No, no, sorry. Show IP route. Okay, let's look at the database. Show IP OSPF database. All right, we get used to these commands. All right, you can see here. All right, mm, look at that, look at that, look at that. All right, good, 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 good. And then show IP OSPF neighbor. All right, who's my DR? Well, apparently router one is my DR. Oh, no, it's my BDR. Aha, priority of 254. Look at that. Should put my glasses on. All right, so that's my BDR right there. So router two, show IP OSPF interface F0 slash zero. There we go. Priority of 255, that makes me the designated router. 
Okay, because of my priority. That's why. Okay, and the BDR is because is router one because of its priority. Okay, let's take a look at it over here. You could have seen it from over there as well, but just to take you in there, show IP OSPF interface F0 slash zero. Enter. And you can see the back of this internet router is 1.1. Okay, and obviously because of its priority. All right, so there you go. OSPF DR BDR elections. All right, not such a big deal. You will not be configuring this. More likely, you'll just be answering multiple choice questions. Remember, DR BDRs form full relationships with everybody. The other routers, DR other, right? They form full relationships with a DR and BDR, but not with each other. They stay at the two way state. Okay. And one last little tidbit that you should know, and I'll put it here in the little notepad. I mean, uh, place note 224.0.0.5 is for uh, regular, I'll put regular routers. And 224.0.0.6 is for the DR, let's put it in caps, DR and BDR. When they send their updates, these are the IP addresses that they send their updates out on. Okay. DRs and BDRs send it out on 224.0.0.6, regular routers on 224.0.0.5. That's it. For the CCNA purposes, OSPF is not a big deal. Later on, trust me, you're going to run into uh, a whole new world, as the song goes, that you're going to learn about OSPF. But for now, this is what you need to know. All right. I'll see you in the next lecture.